Good afternoon and welcome. Let's take a look at our top story this hour. The two-day European Union summit is currently underway in Brussels. From talks on foreign affairs to breaking the impasse over the imposing sanctions on Belarus, everything is on the agenda. The European Union leaders have opened the way to long-delayed sanctions on Belarus in a summit deal that patched over deep international internal divisions on how to handle Turkey. Cyprus has lifted its block on the countermeasures against the government in Minsk. After fellow member states agreed to issue a veiled threat of sanctions against Ankara over its contentious Mediterranean energy exploration. We therefore expect that Turkey from now on abstains from unilateral actions. In case of such renewed actions by Ankara, the EU, EU will use all its instruments and options available. We have a toolbox that we can apply immediately. But this is not what we want. We want and would prefer to work on a new, a long-term EU-Turkey relationship. Still hanging over the leaders, though, is the bloc's problem with violations of the rule of law in member states and how efforts to punish those violations are tied in with money. Now, the Coronavirus Recovery Fund of 750 billion euros and the European Union's 1.1 trillion euros multi-year budget is also on the agenda. But one key issue to watch out for is the EU's policy direction on China. In the last decade, China made significant inroads into Europe of 650 investments since 2010, close to 40% were linked to state-owned firms. Now, Chinese state influence was hidden through multiple layers of ownership and complex shareholding structures. We're being joined by our DW correspondent, Chelsea Delaney, live from Berlin. Good afternoon to you. Thank you for being with us. Now, the two-day EU summit has begun. There is a lot happening in Europe. A lot is on the agenda. What are we expecting? So really the, the, the heart of this summit is the EU's foreign policy strategy going forward. Um, there are a lot of different conflicts really bubbling up right now, uh, and the EU has found itself increasingly paralyzed to act. Um, and that's in part because of the way the EU makes foreign policy decisions. It, you know, it has 27 countries and each country has to agree. They need a unanimous decision whenever they're um, deciding on, on many foreign policy decisions uh, and each country of course has its own uh, domestic interest and, and that often really conflicts with the EU wide interest so we've seen this over the past two days uh, really playing a role in things like the the sanctions on on Belarus they the EU did finally decide on um, to to allow those to go forward but it required uh, a, a bit of diplomatic uh, negotiating to get Cyprus um, on board after they wanted more uh, of a crackdown on Turkey and the rising um, aggress aggression from Turkey uh, in terms of drilling off the, the coast of Cyprus. So um, this all is, is really pointing to the fact that the EU is very much struggling to um, come forward and, and be a really uh, active player in foreign policy. So one of the big discussions that is being had in Brussels today is, is if the EU should move away from unanimous decisions on, on things like foreign policy, because it, it clearly has made them a bit of a weak player uh, in the eyes of many of its um, international peers. Right. And in a, a summit deal that patched over the uh, international divisions on how to handle Turkey, we know the European Union is speaking about imposing sanctions on Turkey if they persist in drilling for gas in the Cypriot waters. Yes, yeah, so this is um, really the, the, the key uh, question. Turkey has been drilling off the coast of Cyprus and Greece. Um, it's disputed territory. Turkey, or Cyprus and Greece say that, that this is their area uh, and that Turkey shouldn't be drilling there. Um, and, and so we have seen uh, EU leaders really criticizing Turkey. But at the same time, Turkey is, is very crucial uh, for the EU because it, it has helped the EU immensely in, in terms of migration policy. Many. 
uh, migrants who would have come to Europe have, have instead stayed in Turkey. So the EU is walking a really fine line uh, because they are very concerned about the aggression from Turkey uh, in terms of its drilling off the, the coast of um, off of Cyprus and Greece. Uh, but at the same time, they really need Turkey as an ally. So we have seen a bit of a split in the, in the discussion, particularly between France and Germany. France is taking a more hardline approach. Germany is soft pedaling a little bit. Uh, but really, there, there isn't much of a cohesive uh, agreement within the EU about how to deal with the increasing aggression of, of Turkish policy. Right. Moving on to uh, the coronavirus recovery fund. There's uh, 750 billion euros. Some countries in the EU needing more assistance than others. Yes, yeah, so this this 750 billion euro package uh, is very crucial and it's it's very urgently needed by many countries within the EU, particularly some of the harder hit southern European countries like Italy, Spain. Um, they are facing significant contractions in GDP, um, more than 10 percent for, for both of those. And they also, uh, especially Spain, continue to struggle with uh, with a second wave of infections and they are having to institute new uh, uh, lockdown and, and restriction measures. Um, that really just underscores how, how urgent this money is needed to help offset the economic impacts for those countries. But like many things within the EU right now, it's very difficult for these countries to come together on, how, on an agreement. And you mentioned earlier the rule of law. Um, that really is the sticking point on this money. Um, many countries think that the, the money should be contingent on countries like Hungary and Poland sticking to the rule of law, basically not backsliding on, on democratic principles. Um, Hungary and Poland are, are threatening to, to veto this package instead. So we are seeing negotiations uh, go forward. Germany, for example, has put forward a proposal. Um, but everyone does agree that this money is urgently needed. So uh, hopefully they will be able to find some sort of agreement soon so that the money can quickly get to the countries that need it. Right. And Chelsea, just one more question before you go. One of the major key issues uh, is the EU's policy direction on China. Uh, we have seen that China has made significant inroads into Europe uh, through business economically. What are we expecting there? So we actually heard earlier today that uh, the EU is, is going to sort of kick this this question down the road a little bit. They're going to hold a summit next month in Berlin to have a broader discussion about how uh, they want to change their policy towards China going forward. So it looks like they were dealing with a lot of other big issues today and, and they want to give this more time. The EU is, is also uh, in a bit of a, a difficult situation with China because China is an extremely important trade partner for the EU. Um, it, it's been the source of a lot of investment in, in the EU, but also many companies, uh, particularly here in, in Germany, companies like Volkswagen uh, and, and Mercedes, they have huge interest in the Chinese market. They get a significant portion of their sales there. So we have seen a, a very difficult uh, a difficult decision making by EU leaders of, of how, uh, how to walk this line between their concern over human rights violations, the crackdown in Hong Kong, um, just the increasing aggressiveness of, of the Chinese regime versus the economic interests. So they, they do want to be more active and, and be more aggressive uh, in, in terms of trying to make China uphold those democratic principles while at the same time still not sacrificing the economic uh, interest of, of the European economy. So a very difficult road, but we'll likely hear more on that next month at this summit in Berlin. All right, Chelsea, thank you very much for bringing us that report and all the latest coming out of EU.